Hello, everybody, and welcome to Appointed to Promote, where we are appointed to promote truth, justice, hope, and faith in a world that needs it now more than ever. As always, I am your host, Ed Walsh, happy to be here by the grace and glory of God for today for what is going to be our second 15-minute episode of FMC, 15-minute Christianity. And I simply want to take an opportunity to welcome those of you who are here for the first time or those who watched our last episode. If you weren't here for our first episode, please back out of this episode and go back to see episode one so you will be up to date with where we are picking things up with today's second episode. And as always, I will mention to all of you, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to also hit the bell notification to make sure you are staying up to date with the latest episodes of Appointed to Promote TV. Now, in recapping our first episode, I asked the question, why is there so much pain, suffering, and hopelessness in the world today? Where a worldwide pandemic, racial tension, political division, and religious discrimination, especially of Christians across the globe, has only added to the fuel of an already flaming fire. And if you also remember, I mentioned to you the best-selling book of all time, and that is the Bible. I also said that this book is the pathway and guide for us to know God's will, his purpose for mankind, and that means each and every one of us, which also means you at home. We established by exploring DNA that there is nothing in our whole world, whether it be in nature or mankind itself, that has been established by random chance or natural selection, only that of an intelligent creator of the universe. And today, we're going to get to the heart of the question I asked in the first episode. And that is to give you the reason and the answer as to why man is struggling with all of this sin, pain, and suffering that he has to go through. Again, oftentimes I hear people say, if God exists, why would he allow the world to be in the mess that it is today? Well, to get to that answer, we have to open up the pages of the Bible itself. Now, the Bible, briefly for your information, is made up of 66 separate books within it. 39 of them being known as the Old Testament, while 27 of them have been known as the New Testament. And it was prophets, priests, kings, and leaders from the nation of Israel that wrote the pages of the Old Testament in Hebrew, while it was the apostles and their associates who wrote the pages of the New Testament in Greek. And you see, the Bible is the perfect place to start because it tells us exactly where all of creation began. And to do that, we go to the beginning of the book itself in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, which says the following. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and he called the darkness night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. So there we see that it is God himself who created the earth. But not only that, he literally spoke all things into existence. And Genesis goes on to tell us that it was in just seven days that God created the heavens of the earth, light and darkness, seas of the land, vegetation, plants, specific lights, such as the sun, moon, and the stars, thus to determine signs, seasons, days, and years. He also created all living things, whether under the sea, on the land, or in the air, as well as cattle, creeping things, and beasts of the earth, all after their own kind. He then moved to the crowning point of creation, that being a living being, a man he named Adam. And as the word of God mentions, Adam was made in God's own image. He also made a woman, Eve, out of the rib of Adam. 
and there he established the first union of mankind and gave them dominion to rule over all creation. Notice, it was man and woman who was created in the garden, folks. It was not a pair of chimpanzees or apes. And it was at the end of that creation in which God said, all he created was good. And on the seventh day, God rested. But he also blessed and sanctified this day. And it wasn't that God himself was tired, but rather that he was establishing the pattern for man's weekly work cycle. And it became known as the Sabbath, which was God's specifically ordained day. God also made the beautiful Garden of Eden, which was a magnificent garden paradise unlike any the world had ever seen. And God placed man in the center of it. Within it were two trees. The first was the tree of life, a real tree with special properties to sustain eternal life. The second here was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And perhaps it was given that title by God because it would soon become a test of obedience for mankind himself. And here, guys, at this moment is where we see why the world is broken. For it was in Genesis chapter 3 that the enemy of God and man, which he is more famously known as Satan or the devil, entered the picture disguised as a serpent. And he wound up tempting Eve at the tree of good and evil. Yet the reason this was so important was because of what happened before this, when God said the following to his creation. Then the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and to keep it. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. So here we see that God gave mankind his first commandment, which was not to eat from the tree of good and evil. And he stressed to them that the day they ate from it, they would surely die. Meanwhile, the devil, who was once one of God's most highest ranking and beautiful angels in heaven, seized upon the opportunity of God's command to his creation to deceive them in which he said to Eve in chapter 3 of Genesis, You surely will not die, for God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. From that moment, Eve was seduced and ate from the tree of good and evil, of which she then passed on to Adam and he partake of the food from the tree that God forbade both of them to eat. And man's immediately recognized shame culminated when God appeared in the garden. For in Genesis chapter 3, God said, Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. God himself then cursed the serpent, that being Satan. And then to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you will eat bread till you return to the ground, because from it you were taken. For you are dust." and to dust you shall return. And at that point, the angels ushered Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden for good. For in that moment that they ate from the tree, they broke the command of God, thus sinning against God himself. And what we need to remember is that God created a heaven-like environment to share with his newly crowned creation, mankind and so that Adam and Eve could live in communion with God himself. But when they sinned and ate from that tree, that special union between mankind and God was severed. It was broken. And this, folks, affected all of creation itself, from all of nature as well as all of the living creatures. 
And remember, it was God who said to them that from the ground you came to the dust, you shall now return. And as God told them, if you eat from the tree, you shall surely die. So what God did here, folks, is give mankind the wages for their actions. In this case, being the wages of sin, which is death. And therefore, death entered into the world for every living thing. You see, folks, God is holy. He is perfect. He is sinless. And therefore, if anything is tainted by sin, they can no longer have fellowship with God. And in other words, that is why the world is the way it is today. We have famine, pestilence, wars, hatred, natural disasters, disease, and yes, death. All because we, mankind, sinned against a holy, perfect God. And therefore, it is our own fault, folks, not God's, that the world is the way it is. And it's not that he doesn't love us or isn't a good God, but rather he is a good God who created us to live in fellowship with him. And so again, we must remember it is mankind who blew it in the Garden of Eden. And therefore, as a result, the world is a world of our own creation, again, which is severed and now separated from God. What's the old saying we often hear? If you make your own bed, you must lie in it. Well, what would the Bible's version of that be? In Galatians, yet Paul said, a man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. But to the one who sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit, he will reap eternal life. So everything we see in our world today is a result of man's sin. All the pain, all the suffering, all the struggle, all the death. And therefore, as Adam and Eve had children, and so on, all the way down the line until today, all of mankind, including you and me, are born into a sinful nature that cannot please God because of what we now do in keeping up with Adam and Eve. And that is where sin has been passed on, and that is why myself and you have committed our own sins against God. Therefore, again, you and I now become separated from God. And there is nothing, folks, and I mean nothing, that can get us right with God. Now, I know you're probably saying, well, if that's the case, then what's the point? I mean, we have no hope. But there is something that God did for us that would give each of us individually the opportunity to receive the gift that God gave us that would reconcile us back to him. And unfortunately, we will have to discuss that in another upcoming episode. And I really do hope you will come back to see exactly what that was that God did for us. But before we do that, I want to invite you back for our next and most intriguing episode, when I will invite you to join me for the greatest 10-question quiz, I can assure you folks, that you will ever take in your life. You will not want to miss this, so come back for our next episode. So, if you like this episode, do me a favor and please hit the thumbs up button on the bottom of the channel to let me know you enjoyed it. And as well, please leave any and all comments below as well to let me know what you thought specifically of this episode. And lastly, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes of Appointed to Promote Television. And lastly, I will leave you with a quote from the book of Colossians, which simply says, See to it that you do not be held captive by philosophy and empty deception, according to the traditions of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. So until I see you next time, God bless.